Hi, hello, my name is Ollie Bliss and this is my channel Book Drop. For those who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer fiction and occasionally I create images out of it. Today I am doing a tag. I am saying a wonderful happy birthday to the lovely Eric from London Reader. Um, it is his 40th birthday. Kudos, congratulations, well done for living this long. That is quite the achievement. Um, <laughs> but also, I just thought this was a super cute, sweet tag created by the lovely Sean the Bookman and Ma <laughs> Sean the Bookmanic, which I'll add down below in the description so you can see his original tag. Um, but he's created um, 10 questions um, in relation to the lovely Eric. Um, and he's just done this, and I have literally just come back from Peru from holiday. Um, I am still experiencing a bit of jet lag, but I just thought this was such a sweet and kind gesture um, to just celebrate a lovely individual. Um, I wanted to jump on board with the bandwagon and take part, and basically just say congratulations and happy birthday to you, Eric. Um, so I will jump straight into the uh, 10 questions and give you my responses. So the first question is Thanks a Bunch, which is a book or books that you've heard about from Eric's channel or blog that um, you have both loved. So uh, the first one which I wanted to discuss um, is The Power by Naomi Alderson. Um, so I read this as part of um, uh, February, uh, which uh, Lawrence and, and the books created, but I included this because of the way in which Eric had described this book in one of his reviews for uh, the future uh, classics tag. So it was on my radar, I had the book and um, I was looking at which ones which was going to do for February, uh, February and he spoke so eloquently about all the reasons why it was such a good book and then when I read it, this book um, has been had a real impact on me in the way I think about gender and um, the way in, in which I think about uh, my own gender identity and my relationship with men and basically how disgusting we can be to women um, and how there is a lot of microaggressions that exist in our social construct and it's really impacted me in a lot of ways and this basically flips all of that on its head um, and well, uh, he definitely nudged me along to actually picking this up and, and reading it, so I'm really grateful for that. I also know that we both heavily enjoyed uh, Sebastian Barry's Days Without End, which is just a sublime and beautiful book, um, and uh, I have a shared love uh, for this one. So looking forward, a book or books you want to read because of Eric's channel or blog, if you so desire, make the uh, September TBR out of them. So um, through conversations in our comments, um, I um, know that we both have enjoyed various Virginia Woolf books, but I know that his favourite uh, Virginia Woolf is The um, the Waves, which I've not actually read. Um, so for me, that is one which has um, gone up on the TBR. Because we have this kind of shared appreciation for Virginia Woolf, and I do like her writing style. Um, I have been previously put off by that particular book, I think because of my mum actually. I think she um, uh, just said that she really didn't enjoy that one, but she also didn't enjoy Mrs Dalloway, whereas I love Mrs Dalloway. So, and the, hearing that Eric likes it has made me kind of go, okay, maybe I should give that one a go. <laughs> The next one is Tables Turned, a book or books you recommend for Eric to read. This one's really good fun. Um, so I've recently been reading this one, I'm actually only halfway through, you can see where I am roughly, but this is um, Mussolini's Island by Sarah Day. So this is a debut novel and it's been shortlisted for the Polari Pies, which I've done a separate video on, um, but because it's got a slightly political leaning and from the Future Classics tag, um, which uh, Eric did, um, I got a sense that he actually has uh, an enjoyment for things with a slight political leaning, and this one certainly does. Um, so this is um, a kind of uh, a, an island which is just off of um, Italy, and it's where they've been holding these 42 um, gay men um, who they want to uh, imprison for their homosexuality um, because they are afraid that they will bring down their chances of winning the war because they are seen as kind of weak, weaker beings because of their homosexuality and that they would be cowardice. Uh, I'm just really enjoying the, the style of writing and um, it's a very unique story um, and I didn't realise it's based in truth, um, although all the characters in this book are actually fictional. So in terms of um, uh, a contemporary writing looking at an unknown historic story, 
um, I think is really interesting and I think Eric would probably appreciate that. <laughs> the next one which I wanted to choose was The Book of Lies by um, Felice um, Pacino. Um, so I just think that Eric will uh, probably re um, identify and resonate with this particular story because um, it, <laughs> some of the things that it's dealing with it is looking at um, structures of history and the way in which we tell our stories and how we control our narratives. And I just think on a kind of political and social level, um, Eric will uh, respond to this one in a way in which I did, which has kind of changed the way in which I look at how we present ourselves, how we can control our narratives and our stories. And particularly as um, a, a fellow member of the LGBT community, I think it's uh, quite interesting because part of this story is all about how um, a circle of gay men uh, were writing at the same time and sharing their stories and how they created this purple circle. And it's interesting to me in terms of how a community of people, any community, can control their narratives collectively. Um, and within the booktube community I think that's quite interesting in terms of how we share and promote different books and uh, what uh, we can do with that actual power and privilege in a certain way. And we could be more strategic in the way in which we communicate that, in the way in which um, characters within this book were. So if, Eric, you did end up reading this, um, I'd be very interested in your response and thoughts to this book. And then um, thirdly, and this is uh, a mean jokey one, but A Social History of Dying by <laughs> Alan uh, Kelly because um, you're 40 now, so you know, you, these are some things that you might want to be considering. This basically looks at all the social aspects of how people die. So although there's only a limited number of ways on uh, um, which the human body is, um, oh, how did he, he phrase it? Uh, <laughs> dispose of the body, that was what I was going to say, dispose of the body. <laughs> so yeah, when uh, uh, <clears throat> there's only a certain number of ways to dispose of a body, uh, but culturally how we honour or celebrate death culturally across the world has a huge variety um, and I was kind of fascinated by that concept and so previously last year at uh, Bradford Literature Festival um, I listened to um, Alan talking about uh, this and um, it just makes you kind of uh, think in terms of memento more and uh, but also uh, just thinking about how culturally we we take part in this aspect of life which affects all of us but culturally we do it in such a varied and different way um, and when you're 40 you're kind of um, the, the, I think the average is like 70, 75 now so you're, you're coming out to that middle mark and um, maybe you want to think about like uh, how you're gonna sign out <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, that is uh, my third choice uh, for you, Eric. So the next one is Eric Carl Anderson, a book by an author with three names. And I actually had to look across my shelves for quite a while just to find an author uh, with three split names. And then, of course, it came to me, uh, Benjamin Alrez Symes, who wrote Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, which is a beautiful, beautiful book. I had the expectation that he's probably read this book already, but um, he did also last year uh, release the inexplicable. Uh, <coughs> he did uh, last year release also the inexplicable logic of my life, which I haven't read. Um, I intend to read. If people want to uh, join up and do a buddy read on that one, I would be game for it because. Um, the, the, just the voice and style of Benjamin R.S. Uh, Sines is so uh, compassionate and compelling and endearing and lovely and it's just like embracing a giant big hug um, and it gives you all the feels. Um, so uh, beautiful, beautiful writer basically. The next one is Expatriate um, Love, a book or, and or about an American living in the UK or vice versa. So I cheated because I was just like, I can't find a book on this level, Sean, I'm sorry. But um, so this is um, uh, like a, a series of interviews which were done with the Craigus brothers. And this is called Our Story, uh, which was written with Fred uh, Dinej. I, I can't pronounce his name, I'm sorry. Um, but basically this is looking at the, the super gangsters that were the Craigus brothers. Um, 
I have a personal <laughs> story where um, basically they came into my father's restaurant. Um, I don't think it was actually the Craze Brothers, I think they were in prison, but some of the gang members came because um, in my small town they have a museum of crime and punishment. And so this mob of gangsters came into our restaurant and we had to serve them. And they all had these Rolls Royces and they were actually um, like giving out posters of them as the gang. Um, and I was about 13, 14 at the time, had no idea who the Craze Brothers were. Um, and uh, so like a few years later, I wanted to find out more about them. But basically my dad was like, yeah, they're not to be messed with, they're like super duper criminals. But I know from reading this that they basically spent some time over in America where they were building connections with um, the Mafia. <laughs> so that's my kind of loose connection for this one. So there we go. Uh, but it's actually a really uh, interesting uh, history of these two, um, how they worked, how they were in and out of prison, and how they grew their kind of empire. And also, I forget which one, Ron, I think, um, it, uh, it, uh, was a, a gay man as well and uh, openly out um, so as a gangster that's kind of cool. Uh, so the next one is Meta, a book with a novelist or writer as the protagonist. So I, because I just can't stop myself, uh, chose Del Peck, uh, either <laughs> Martin or Martin and John, which is novel. There is a meta element which on my first read I completely overlooked but the second time I read this, and I've, I've read this like four or five times, I love this book. Um, there is a meta element to this uh, story, but I don't want to go into it because it might spoil some of that experience. just want to highlight that it does exist, um, and it changes the scope and nature of the reading of this book, and uh, it ripped my heart open a whole new level after um, discovering that and properly reading it. I think I was just probably a bit too young the very first time that I read this, but it's part of the reason why this book has stayed with me, it continues to be my favourite book of all time. Next one is Lordy Lordy, uh, a book which is uh, set um, uh, 40 years ago, or um, by writer 40 years ago, I couldn't find that, but what I did find is 1979 uh, by uh, Rhonda Cameron, which is basically a personal memoir, she's living in a small Scottish town, um, and it kind of describes her lifestyle um, in this small area where she's going around smoking and kissing and um, enjoying bands and learning about life. Um, uh, but it's kind of of that period and I just thought it's very appropriate. I'm a year out, but hey, I almost got there. Handlebar but None, um, a book about someone with a fabulous moustache or beard. So I chose Ivan from Closet Case, which is by uh, Robert Rohde. I've done a full review on this one, which I'll add so you can check it out. Um, but so this is um, all about Lionel Frank, who is very much in the closet. Um, however, he comes across Ivan, who's a Romanian Transylvanian, um, and falls head over heels um, for him, infatuated by him. He is a big, burly, masculine man with a heavy beard, um, and it basically goes through uh, all his trials to try and keep himself in the closet as much as possible because of his uh, company is not progressive. This is set in. I think this is set in the 90s and it is in, an interesting one to read now and you do see the tone of the time. The way things are described and the way people talk in this is so comparably different to the way things are now in the West particularly. Um, so it is an interesting read on that level as well but it is incredibly funny, incredibly funny, incredibly stupid. Next one is Out Out A Brief Candle and this is a book in which a birthday figures predominantly. So um, this is The Hours by Michael Cunningham. I have also done a full review on this one. I imagine that Eric has already read this one. He probably has um, uh, because of his love affair with Virginia Woolf. Uh, but also because this book and this film is just so incredibly unctuous and amazing. Um, it's one of my faves. Uh, the, it's incredible that this is a man who has written um, looking through the lives of three women and his uh, voice uh, for each of them is so distinct and immersive. Um, this whole idea of the number three and uh, the three of them, they tie into each other and it's quite cyclical in the way that they work but um, with Mrs Brown she is cooking uh, a cake for her husband 
um, and it is a, a domestic war which she is experiencing for herself and she is living in this isolated and confined environment and it is the biggest challenge for her to uh, come across during that day. I think he would appreciate this if he has not already banged on about it and said, yes, it's amazing. <laughs> so there we go. And then finally, many happy returns indeed. Um, so this is where I tag some other people. So I just thought about other people who I know watch his channel. Peg, the book prize maniac. Russell from Ink and Paper and Matthew Sharappa, um, who I all know, love and enjoy Eric's channel and um, they might already be, be planning on doing this anyway but I feel that they will respond to this in a wonderful way and it would be really interesting to see what they do in response to thinking about the books which uh, they think Eric will enjoy and also the ones which have permeated and made them go out and get the books which he's recommended. Uh, anyway, many happy returns to you, Eric. I hope you have a wonderful uh, birthday week, and I hope lots of other people will take part in this tag and celebrate your 40th birthday with you, because it's such a cool little tag. So, um, happy birthday, and see you all again soon.